Hello, hello. My name is Solmaz and you are listening to the Tabling Thoughts podcast. In this podcast, I'm going to talk about my experiences as a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. The little points that I notice in my clients' life that each of them affect the quality of their lives and their relationships enormously. And for some reason, they don't pay that much of attention to those points. And of course, confidentiality is always there. Before we start, if you want to know a little bit about me, as I mentioned, I'm a relationship coach with the fancy name of Effective Relationship Strategies. I also practice as a psychotherapist in Ontario, Canada. I live in Canada. I'm married and I have a son. I also have another podcast called Lam Ta Kalam, which is in Farsi for my Farsi speaking audience. Lam Ta Kalam is a very well received podcast. As of today, it has more than 3.5 million downloads on just Castbox. The purpose of Lam Ta Kalam, same as Tabling Thoughts, has always been to talk about the issues, not necessarily give direct or custom made solutions. And of course, the same applies here. So if you know anyone who speaks in Farsi and is looking for that kind of content, Lam Ta Kalam is the place to go. You may find the link to my Instagram page and all other information, including Lam Ta Kalam's links in the description. Today, you're listening to the fourth episode of Tabling Thoughts, which is published in February 2024. And I'm going to talk about the concept of affair. Okay, first and most importantly, the disclaimer. I'm not going to give you solutions if you had an affair or your significant other had an affair. This episode is not anything like a psychotherapy session. I'm going to talk about the concept of affair, a couple of root causes of even thinking having an affair or having an affair. And at the end of the day, how to look at it from a different point of view view. Years ago when I was studying Carl Gustav Jung's psychology, I came across to this concept of shadows. Carl Gustav Jung says anything we haven't lived in our own life, any kind of personality threat or any kind of values that we have condemned in our own lives and other people live, it may come as something that completely possesses us and we live it in a destructive way. And Jung calls them this kind of personality threats as our shadows. Has it ever happened to you that you go to a party and you see someone and you think, wow, why do I like that person a lot? Or wow, I really don't like that person. This is the extreme kind of example. I'm not going to elaborate around the concept of shadows a lot. I just want to tell you, shadows are the personality threats that for any reason we may condemn them in our own day-to-day life and we haven't been able to live them. And when we see in other people, we get extremely possessed or attracted or rejected. Having said that, this is the point of view that Carl Jung looks at affair. Young says when you get attracted to someone else, in our case, outside a committed relationship, it means that there is something in you that you haven't been paying attention enough. And when you see that person living it alive and beautifully and cherishing it, you get attracted to that person. Everything we are talking about is in your subconscious mind. It's not conscious. You're not aware of it. And when we're attracted to someone else, what comes first? Hormones. And what's the first idea? Having sex. Young says, being intimate with another human being completes us. It's like that we are being whole as two people. So when we have something in our own personality, in our own life that we lack and we see it in another human being, We want to have sex to be whole, to be completed. This is all subconscious. And it doesn't mean we are supposed to do it. All being said, knowing that what lacks in my own life, in my own personality, and seeing it in another human being will help me to go after what lacks, not having a fear. 
Young looks at the fair as an opportunity to look at her own life in a different way, to look for the parts that lacks. Years ago, I had a client, a gentleman, who came to me talking about a woman that he was extremely attracted to. He didn't even know the woman. He was terrified of that kind of attraction since he was married with two kids. He was happy with his life. He was happy with his significant other. He was happy with his work. He was honest to tell me that he had challenges in his relationship, but the challenges were not kind of challenges that he would want to leave that marriage or he was not happy with the marriage's whole picture. So he was terrified. He told me, I'm extremely terrified. I don't know what to do. I love my wife. I don't want to damage my relationship and marriage. And I need your help. First, I was extremely proud of that gentleman that before he does something that he would regret it for the rest of his life, he had been looking for help. And I told him, I acknowledged it 100 times. Because the easiest thing was to just be intimate with the other woman. And it came to his surprise that he didn't know the woman. He had just once shook hand with her and said, hi, how are you doing? That's it. The normal, basic greeting. Throughout the coaching sessions we had, we went to the root cause of this attraction. I told him that instead of going after his hormones and just having an affair and thinking that that's all he wants, he should go to the root cause of this kind of thoughts. He should find what lacks in his own personality, which part of his life he hasn't been able to live the way that deeply inside he was seeking it. And because of that, he's attracted to that woman. We found several parts of his life that he had been trying to ignore, trying to condemn, trying not to pay attention to be successful in his current life. One of them was to play music. The other one was to have fun. Fun had nowhere in his life. I don't want to give you more detail here for one good reason. Not every single person has the same reasons to be attracted to another human being. We all have parts of our lives, parts of our personalities that we don't want to live or we haven't been able to live or we have been sacrificing to get to goals that have appeared more important for us. I'm not sure if you know Esther Perel. She's a well-known psychotherapist. She has a podcast called Where Should We Begin? I know her since COVID when it was locked down and there were many partners and husbands and wives that have been stuck together or being apart for a while. And Esther Perel had this series of podcasts to interview them, have psychotherapy sessions with them and recorded them and published them as podcasts. Of course, I'm sure she had the permission of those people. Nevertheless, this series of podcasts are amazing. We will put the link of those podcasts for you to just listen and enjoy because I learned a lot. Esther's one point of view that has been criticized a lot by many individuals is the way that she looks at affair. She looks at concept of affair, nature of affair, and the opportunities and stuff that may happen afterwards that we can look at them in a different way. She does not promote affair as she has been emphasizing a lot. But she says, if that has happened, if someone had affair or you had a partner who had an affair and you still want to be in that relationship, that's a very interesting opportunity to look at the parts of your relationship that were lacked and because of that affair happened. We are not looking for the guilty one. We are not looking for whose fault it was. We are looking how to repair the relationship. We are looking at the parts that are extremely valuable for you and you may be able to repair them step by step. Esther talks about the way that we can question the person who had affair instead of just criticizing them or going to details of affair. Instead of asking what time you went, how many times you did it, what did you have, what did they tell you? Instead of all these, she wants you to ask questions that specifically you may find the root cause of the affair. Having said that, I believe this kind of questions, this kind of conversations are way too deep and specified that a person who has faced this kind of damage could be able to ask them. That's the reason I'm talking about the affair in this episode of podcast. 
because I want to bring it to your attention. If it's important for you to keep your relationship and you have the idea of attraction to another human being or wanting to have an affair, first pause. Of course, get professional help, but think about it. What's interesting in that person? Instead of blaming your partner that, oh, they're not fun, they're not paying attention to me, they're not spending time with me, go deeper. These are not good reasons to have affair. On the other side, If you have a partner who had an affair, think about it. Do you want to keep your relationship? Instead of blaming that person, that's easiest to do. Think about it. Do you want to keep the relationship? Do you want to work on it? If yes, first, get professional help. Second, you may be able to look at this unfortunate affair as an opportunity to make your relationship stronger. Again, here, we are not promoting affair. As Esther says, when someone has, like, say, cancer and then they survive, when they talk about their experiences, they say that, oh my God, if it wasn't because of cancer, I wouldn't be the person I am now. Does it mean they're promoting the cancer? No. But they say, since it has happened, these are the lessons I learned. They're not promoting the cancer, right? It's the same with affair. If you are into repairing the relationship, if you are sure your significant other regrets having affair, it's time to work on your relationship. There's something that Esther talks about that she has faced many couples, one of them having affair, is that we should make sure that the person not regrets having affair rather than regretting making the other party sad or hurting them. Because if it's mostly regretting, oh, I hurt you versus, oh, I did affair, the relationship may not be repaired the way that it should be. I'm sure being in that situation and feeling the pain, the hurt and everything makes it way more complicated than it is. So that's why, my friend, you may absolutely need to get a help from couple therapy sessions. Don't live it the way it is. Don't live the pain, the wounds and damages the way they are right now. Use it as an opportunity to make it stronger, make yourself stronger, make your relationship stronger. And that's my message for this episode of podcast. Thank you for listening to this episode. Please tell me which topics you want me to talk about. Until next episode, take good care of yourself. Mm-hmm.